So welcome everybody um, to the, welcome this morning. Um, today we you will today we're going to watch the very first of what's going to be a global concrete webinar series. Today we'll be discussing inspection of PT ducts. Are they grouted, or more importantly, are they not grounded? I'm Shirley Underwood. I'm general manager here at Produce Project UK, and I will be your um, host for this morning. So what we got in the plan for you today? Well, very the very first thing you're going to meet is um, my colleague, Tristan Craig Tyler. He's our field application engineer. He's going to give you a brief introduction to GPR and pulse equitomography. Then zooming in all the way from Torino, you have Guido Tronca, who will be discussing the beauty of why combining both GP8000 and the PD8000 is so complementary when testing PD ducts. Then you'll meet our second guest speaker, that's Steve Neville from HDA. He's going to give you some real life examples of his experiences on site detecting voids in PT ducts. And then in section four, we're going to do a quick poll. So just if you could answer some questions quickly. And then we'll also give you the chance to ask any questions to our panelists. So at the bottom of your screen, you will find a Q&A. Um, box if you can just type in your questions in there and we can address them at the um, end of the session. I'm going to take you over um, the basics of ground penetrating radar and ultrasonic uh, pulse tomography today. Uh, so without further ado, I'll, uh, I'll get started. So here we have the ProSet range of instruments for concrete and today specifically we'll be looking at the GPR Live series and the Pundit Live Array series. So just to be specific, that includes the GP8800. That's our small GPR for hard to reach areas and curved surfaces, etc. The GP8000, that's our standard concrete GPR, uh, market leader over here in the UK now. And lastly, but not least, the uh, ultrasound pulse echo technology, the Pundit Live Array series. Uh, this is called the PD8000. So let's just have a quick overview of how these two technologies work. So we'll start off with uh, GPR here. Uh, it's a transmitter and receiver. So here we have the antenna. It's placed on the surface of the concrete. It sends down lots of signals. As the signals hit a uh, boundary of discontinuity, it populates something called uh, a hyperbola, uh, and this denotes the presence of a rebar. So for the ultrasound pulse tomography, here we have the same uh, bit of concrete, but we'll see something slightly different. So we have a similar situation and we send the signal via a transmitter and collect it via a receiver. And this also basically reflects from a boundary of discontinuity, or in this case, the, the back wall of the slab. If we stitch many of these signals together, these A scans, all we can do is produce uh, a B scan image here. And as you can see, the boundary discontinuity, in this case, the, um, the air at the back of the slab, is quite clearly highlighted. So the outputs from these two instruments. So both of the instruments give you a, a B scan or a cross section view. In the case of the GPR, you have both the migrated and non-migrated version. You can also produce a C scan, or a bird's eye view or an eagle eye view, should I say. Um, you can also produce that into a, into a 3D model, um, all of that live on site. And last but not least, if you want to project that 3D model or the C-scan into the real world, you can do that through our augmented reality software. So let's look at the types of things that you can detect with this instrument. So you've got rebars, objects, which might be things like ducts or pipes, uh, thickness of slab, uh, defects, so that might be honeycombing or spalling. And if we come to a, a theoretical example of that here, if you look in the bottom left, you've got a nice key here showing you the bat wall, the rebars, ducts, cracks, delaminations. And uh, traditionally, if uh, you were to go on site and you were to use uh, a Pulse GPR, which is, is what sort of 90% of the industry did, 
before we produced um, our step frequency continuous wave system. Here you would get the first layer of rebar quite nicely, um, usually only ducts or large pipes that aren't too deep. But you'd have some limited detection in terms of finding delaminations. You may be able to detect the um, second layer of rebar depending on the antenna that you had. Um, and you also have the uh, physical limitations of the technology. So objects shadowed behind metal or objects shadow, uh, shadowed behind air. And you also have lack of penetration. So you'd miss any, any deeper targets, no matter what they are. So if we then look at the same example, but we put the step frequency continuous wave antenna on this from Prosec, along with a PD8000 ultrasonic tomography, we can increase that um, detection quite significantly. Um, so we've got all of the, um, the cracks and the delaminations, the, the voids and uh, the ducts, and also quite nicely the second layer of rebar. We still have some limits of detection in terms of the physical properties. So small rebars on the back face may not be detectable, along with any objects shadowed by, again, metal or air. So just to reinforce this, this is what you could get. And this is what is now possible. So if we then look at why this is possible, we can break down into two sections. So we have the GPR and the, um, and the pulse echo here. So GPR reflects 100% off a metal object, whereas pulse echo reflects 99% off an air gap. GPR can't see behind metal and pulse echo can't see behind air. GPR will travel through an air gap and pulse echo will travel through metal. So in summary, with GPR, you can see behind an air gap and you can see metal clearly. And with pulse echo, you can see behind metal and you can also see air gaps very clearly. So if we move on to an example of this, here we've got a, a concrete slab and it's got a delamination in it, a small one, under a millimetre small. And we can look at the two data outputs from the two instruments. So on the left hand side here, you have the GPR scan, the cross-sectional view. You've got a nice clear battle wall continuously across the scan, but not much in terms of the crack. And on the right hand side here, you have the pulse echo technology very clear delamination or cracking and partial uh, back wall there. So combining the two scans together gives you a very clear picture of exactly what's going on within the concrete. This just illustrates why uh, they work so well together. So if I now move this on to the, uh, the live scans of this example. So here we have a video. First up is the GP8000. You scan it across the surface, and as you can see in the scan there, you've got the nice clear bat wall, so you can tell the thickness of the slab, um, but you've not really got much in terms of, uh, in terms of a, a crack there. So we'll move it on to the migrated views. You know, this is the raw data, um, but still not much to speak of. So if we use the PD8000 now, it's a little bit slower because it's a, a contact conduction method induction method rather and uh, as you can see on the scan on the top right hand side uh, you've got partial back wall um, but you've also got the delamination or crack highlighted extremely clearly um, so again this is just to illustrate why these two products used in conjunction with each other can give you the full picture of what's going on inside the concrete itself and uh, and with that a brief introduction to the product. I'm going to pass you over to the experts now, and they're going to take you through some uh, selected applications. So um, I'll pass over now to Greedo Tronka. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat for me at the end. Over to you, Greedo. Thanks a lot, Tristan, and thanks to all the friends at Screening Eagle for the opportunity of being here today. Uh, my name's Guido Tronka. I've been in the 
NDT business for a while now, starting from the late 90s, coming from an academic background of material science, then focusing on NDT uh, among uh, uh, investigation company and the testing lab, uh, then joining uh, Prosec for five years of nice and intense development, and before uh, being here today as a freelance consultant and service provider. Now, I'm personally very fond of these two techniques that I saw in the past years. Uh, they can be labeled as imaging techniques, the one, meaning the ones that really visually give you the inside of what's uh, inside uh, the object. Uh, how, they, how do they do that? They're both echometric methodologies. They, as Tristan mentioned, they shoot some impulse into the body and listen to its reflected component. Uh, what is that in physics that uh, uh, causes a reflection from within a body that if it was totally homogeneous, wouldn't bring back any uh, information. Well, it's the contrast between two materials. The higher the contrast in property, the more different these materials are, the higher will be the reflected com uh, component and uh, the lower will be the transmitted component. So, uh, the difference between GPR and ultrasound. GPR is using an electromagnetic wave. Hence, uh, it will feel the difference into the dielectric properties of the material. You can imagine them as a conductivity. The more different those two materials are, are the sharper will be the reflection. Total similar scenario for ultrasound, but in this case, we are looking at an acoustic impedance difference. Read it as density. So narrowing down to our field, which is uh, actually concrete, we can uh, imagine a word made of concrete and air geometrical boundaries or defects, and on the other side, uh, the uh, steel reinforcement. Okay, just in key point is concrete is electrically more similar to air rather than steel. Hence, when a concrete air interface is met, only a partial reflection will occur, allowing the wave to pass through and investigate further. At the same time, when we bounce against a steel interface, we will suffer, we will appreciate a total reflection, hence giving us the best sensitivity to that kind of object. Well, when we use ultrasound, we are looking at acoustic impedance, okay, Acoustic impedance or density of concrete is much more similar to steel than it is to air. Hence, when we bounce an acoustic wave against an air boundary, we can expect the maximum sensitivity and the 100% the reflection, while a steel interface will allow part of the wave to be transmitted. Enough for physics that was only to justify our statement and our key application. So GPR will be a killer for uh, locating uh, metal objects. It will enjoy the pleasurable benefit of not suffering an air interface. Wheel was invented for a reason and we all like to scan even at a given distance from the surface while ultrasound will give us insight even beyond heavily reinforced structures, while presenting at the same time the highest sensitivity to void crack delaminations. If we look at the other side of the metal, uh, then what I see best will make me blind below. 
So I won't be able probably to penetrate through heavy reinforcement or my penetration that will be significantly reduced. And as Tristan beautifully showed before, small.